Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be looking and talking about some of the Imperium's greatest starships. I've put together a list about some ships I personally think stand out when it comes to the Imperial Navy. Now before we jump in and we talk about these ships, I would love everyone to head over to the Realm of Plastic website. The link is in the description of this video. They have a fantastic Imperial ship name generator. Please go over there, click on the generate name and post in the comment section what name you have for your starship. As you can see in the background, the name I got was Herald of Agnes, honored defender known for daring raids on the schematic scum of Agnes Delta. So there we go. That is my name. Now let's jump in and let's talk about some of the Imperium's greatest starships. This may come as a surprise to many people, but I'm going to be starting with the Great Fortress Monastery of the Imperial Fists. Yes, the Phalanx. Now, I know technically this isn't a spaceship. It's more akin to a space fortress, but it's all the same when we come to discussing these things in this video. This is one of the biggest and greatest ships that the Imperium has in its arsenal. So it's only right for me to talk about it in this video. Now the Phalanx is a rarity because this fortress monastery wasn't built by the Imperium. This was built during the Dark Age of Technology when humanity was at its height of scientific and power in the galaxy. How it came to be in the Imperial's hands was through the Primarch Rogal Dawn. When the Primarchs were scattered around the galaxy, Rogal Dawn landed on the planet of Inwit. Orbiting that planet was the Phalanx itself. As Rogaldorn conquered his planet and henceforth the system around him, he took into his arsenal the Phalanx itself. When the Emperor arrived in the Inwit system to see Rogaldorn and claim him as his son, Rogaldorn offered the Phalanx to the Emperor as a sign of his loyalty. The Emperor, seeing this gift, gave it back to Rogal Dawn to wield it in the upcoming wars. It's said to look upon the Phalanx is like looking upon a moon itself. It's not allowed to go too close to the planet of terror because it can actually affect the gravity on the planet. That puts into scale on how big this fortress monastery is. As I stated, this was the Imperial Fist and Rogal Dawn's personal flagship during the Great Crusade and the Horus Heresy. Through those ages, it fought not only the enemies of mankind, but also fellow space marines and his brother Primarchs at the Siege of Terror. Now, over the millennia of service, the Phalanx has sadly fallen into disrepair. Tech adepts and tech marines, a part of the actual Imperial Fist chapter, simply don't know how to keep the systems running. Since this was made during the Dark Age of Technology, the secrets of that time have sadly been lost. Now, during one of the recent engagements, the Phalanx was present at the fall of Cadia, when Abaddon and the Black Legion broke the planet and pushed out from the Eye of Terror. The Phalanx received heavy damage and returned to Terra to seek repairs. Not only did they receive the repairs that were greatly needed, they were also visited by the custodians of the Shadow Keepers' shield host. The Shadow Keepers opened their dark cells and gifted the Imperial Fist a secret technology that was hidden deep within their vaults. This technology gave staggering results to the Phalanx and it was now operating at a level not seen for countless years. Now the next ship on the list, or should I say ships on the list, belonged to none other than the Emperor of Mankind himself. He had at his disposal two flagships. One was called Bucephalus. Now for those of you who may have recognized that name, that is indeed the name of Alexander the Great's horse. His other ship, was called Imperator Somnium, which roughly translates into the Imperial Dream. Now, sadly, we don't have a lot of information on these ships. The information that we do know come from a limited amount of information. For example, Bucephalus had a garrison of Legio Custodes on the ship, 
we know that it took part in the battle of Gyroth Fravian. Now, this was a battle where the Primarchs themselves fought to overthrow the Orc Empire. In that battle, there was the Lunar Wolves, Death Guards, and the Imperial Defist. The full legions were deployed, and they were about to be defeated. But out of the blackness of the void, the Emperor himself, aboard his flagship, Bucephalus, came to the aid of his Primarch sons and their Astartes. He personally led a force composed of a thousand Legio Custodes into the heart of the mighty Orc Horde and slew the Orc Warlord. And when it comes to the Imperium Somnium, the other flagship of the Emperor, the information we have for this is lacking as well. We know that it was a golden battleship of an unknown class, and it's described as dwarfing even the largest battleships of that era. So when we think of the Gloriana class ship, this ship dwarfed it. So that is how big the Emperor's flagship was. As I mentioned, sadly, we have no idea what happened to these ships after the Heresa. As far as I'm aware, because I am reading the Siege of Terror series at the moment, they haven't really been mentioned that much. They haven't taken part in any naval warfare. Hopefully, they will survive the Siege of Terror, and maybe the Custodes are hiding them in the Soul System to use when the need is right. The next ship on the list is none other than the rock the rock belongs to the dark angels chapter and it's all that remains of their home world of caliban during the great crusade the primarch of the dark angels lionel johnson sent his former mentor and close friend luther back to caliban in disgrace the heart of luther grew jealous of the lion and the praise he had received in that jealousy the ruinous powers of chaos stoked the fires that would be Caliban's downfall. When Horus was slain and the traitors defeated at Terror, the lion returned to Caliban, but he was not welcomed with open arms. Instead, the planet unleashed its guns at the orbiting fleet. The Primarch himself descended upon Caliban and fought Luther in single combat. As the world burned around them, warp storms torn the planet asunder. What was left of Caliban is now known as the Rock. It was equipped with huge engines to power it to the forefront of humanity's battles in the galaxy, seeking vengeance on those who betrayed the chapter and retribution to those who stand in its way. The Rock is very special because it harbors a Primarch at the heart of it. During the battle between Luther and the Lion, the Lion was knocked unconscious and carried away by the Watchers. Luther himself was imprisoned in the Rock, but has now since escaped. But deep in the heart of the Rock, the Lion still sleeps, watched by the Watchers. There is some theories that one day, the Lion will awake, lead the chapter once more, and go on the hunt for Luther. In terms of size, there is some debate depending if this is the biggest Imperial warship. We know if we compare it to the Imperial Navy and their warships they have, it is definitely bigger than anything in their arsenal. But if we compare it to something like the Phalanx, which itself is described as a moon-sized object, that is where the debate comes into it. It's really up to the reader to decide which of these ships is the biggest one. The next ship on the list is the Tsar Questa. This is the flagship of Arch Magos Belisarius Call, creator of the Primaris Marine, and in his own words, the greatest mind of the Imperium. Now, the flagship of Calls is not a one off like the Phalanx or the Rock, it's a class of ship known as an Arch Mechanicus. These ships are ancient in design and harbor some of the greatest pieces of technology in the galaxy. We know that there's a handful of these ships still in service, but for the purpose of this video, I wanted to focus on Belisarius Call and his flagship since some of the latest books describe the inner workings of his Arc Mechanicus. These ships are sent out into the stars to seek knowledge. Their ultimate goal is to seek an STC or other forms of aerial tech for the Adeptus Mechanicus to wield in their favor of either production or war against their enemies. When the High Lords of Terror and the Lord Commander himself, Rebuta Gilliman, were invited aboard Call's Art Mechanicus. It was described as being a forge world in space. Call had crafted a legion of not only marines, but tanks, 
suits of armour, weapons and dreadnoughts to serve the Imperium in the coming battles. This just goes to show how vast these ships can be and the technology they have inside them. Next up is the battleship Dominus Astra. This was an Emperor class battleship commanded by Lord High Admiral Zacharias Raff. The Emperor class battleship is one of the largest of the ships used by the Imperial Navy. You normally find them commanded by the most senior Imperial Navy officers. The reason why I picked the Dominus Astra is because how vital it was in aiding the Ultramarines during the Battle of Macrag in the First Tyrannic War. During this battle, High Fleet Behemoth descended upon Ultramar. Even though the Ultramarines and the forces that came to its aid stood against the Tyranid foe, the sheer number of them began to overwhelm the planet's defences. In orbit of the planet, Lord High Admiral Sakarius Raff fought against overwhelming swarms of Tyranid bioships. In an act of great heroism and sacrifice, Sakarius Raff pierced into the centre of the Tyranid fleet and with the Dominus Astra detonated his ship's warp drives. Reality was torn open, sucking both the Dominus Astra and the Tyranid ships into oblivion. Without the sacrifice of the Dominus Astra and Zacharius Raff, the Tyranid forces would have surely overcome the defenders of Ultramar and the planet itself would have been consumed. The last ship we're going to discuss in this video belongs to the newly crowned Lord Commander of the Imperium, Rebuta Gilliman. McCrag's Honor is a Gloriana class battleship. It remains the largest battleship currently in service to the Imperium of Man. The ship is steeped in history, one such being the Battle of Kalf, where the word bearers sent a fleet of their own to the planet of Kalf, where they were to muster with the Ultramarines to attack a reported Orc horde. Unbeknown to the Ultramarines, the word bearers had been sent to exterminate the Ultramarines and bring war to the realm of Ultramar. When the word bearers launched their surprise attack, the Ultramarines fleet was devastated. Even the McCrag's honor suffered heavy damage, but due to its size and hosting a vast amount of Ultramarines, it survived boardings from the word bearers and brought vengeance upon them. This is where one of the most famous naval engagements took place, the pursuit of the Infidus Imperator. The Infidus Imperator was a flagship of Colferion, one of the masterminds behind the Battle of Kalf. As Rebuta Gilman fought back in the void to retake the shipyards, Colferion boarded the Infidus Imperator and ordered it to retreat from the system. Rebuta Gilman, seeing this, ordered one of his chapter masters, Marius Gage, to pursue the vessel and destroy it. What followed was a battle not only infused with war power and destruction, but tactical brilliance and strategy. The McCrag's honour is still at the forefront of waging war against all those who oppose it. It is a reminder to the enemies of the Imperium that humanity is still the rightful ruler of the stars. Thank you for watching this video. If you've got any thoughts, feedback, anything you want to talk about, then please post it down below and we'll have a nice little discussion down there. Have a great day. See ya and bye-bye.